All right. I am going to be working on this snowman in a snow globe with a tree. But you can't see any of it very well yet because I drew it in a white watercolor pencil. So I'm going to use a dark blue watercolor pencil. I've got my handy dandy roll of tape that is going to be the outside of my snow globe. So I'm just going to trace that real quick and let's see if you can even see. Yeah, you can see that pretty well. All right. So after I've got that outside ring, I am going to draw another little ring and I'm just going to sketch it in. And this gives you the illusion of the thickness of the glass. And I don't think you can see that very well yet. So we are going to zoom in. There we go. Zoom in. Now you can see the thickness going on. So, and this is just a guide. It's not the perfect measurement or anything like that. It's probably about an eighth of an inch, maybe a sixteenth, but closer to an eighth of an inch. But that will give me a, a place to put my highlight around the outside edge so that it will give us that illusion of the glass. Now I'm going to go ahead and trace in the, draw in the base. And the base is a smile underneath of the gla glass ball. So what I did is I've just drawn along this line right here to give me a little smile. And then I'm going down about half an inch and I'm drawing another little smile and I'm just closing it off on the ends with a little collar. Basically it is like a little collar that's holding this ball from rolling around. Then I'm going to make a backwards, uh, one side of a parentheses, the other side of the parentheses, and another smile connecting those two ends. And then I'm going to make the opposite of that parentheses and the opposite of this one. And this time I'm going to draw along the bottom. But my bottom, it's actually going to go off the canvas. And the other end is going to go off the canvas. Also, the other side goes off the canvas also. And I just did that because that's the way it ended up being. I'm going to go ahead and put probably an inch and a half up from the bottom my little horizon back edge of the table, whatever it ends up being. And I'm going to draw down the side. I'm just connecting this line down the side. And whatever I end up, whatever color I end up doing the table, I will just take and wrap it around the edge. So I already painted the background on this. I had a whole bunch of leftover paint on a palette. And so I had gone ahead and painted up, oh, two or three or four or five canvases with the leftover paint. Um, yeah, it was real basic. The colors are the, there we go. So the colors that, the, to mix this blue on the background, we'll put a little bit on to my canvas so that way you can see what I did. I took the white and just a touch of phthalo blue and a just a itty bitty bit 
of the yellow and that's way more way more yellow than I was expecting a little more blue and a little more white <laughs> the neat thing about it and I'm not going to mix it all perfectly now you can see that it's sort of just generally mixed and I can just go like this I'm just lightening up the background a little bit it looks like and that's okay it makes it a little more wintry the color that I had on the background was just to get me started I'm not married to it I don't have to live with that but now that I started I'm going to go ahead and quickly get this in and then I'll draw the snowman in while this is drying so that way I can continue to get things done I'll mix up a little bit more of this paint since now I'm going since now I know I'm going to actually paint it and not just show you how to mix it up there we go we've got a lovely color going here it's almost exactly the same color as the background now but I wasn't trying to make an exact replica of it. It just happened to work out in some spots to be the same color. I am wrapping around the edges with my color. You see how this edge here I should have grabbed my bigger brush. I didn't. That's okay. because I can always switch brushes and grab a, grab a larger brush. Get it a little bit wet, come back, pick up some paint, mix the mix, but not too much. There we go. And I don't mind turning my canvas around get right up along that edge I kind of like having the lighter color around the outside here just just a bit I may take a darker color around the edge of the glass and then a lighter color on the inside of it haven't quite decided yet This is kind of exciting because I haven't ever done a collaborative event before. So I'm hoping that what I do, people are going to like. I have an idea for a couple different kinds of projects. This one, and then I have a uh, folded house, a paper house that's kind of like the old style uh, holiday decorations that were made in the 40s, the 30s and the 40s, called putts houses. And I don't know why it's a putts, P-U-T-Z. I believe that it's because people would putts around while they were making them. They were just sort of little things that you could do. They're usually made of paper and maybe painted, maybe not, maybe made with colored bits of paper tissue paper for the windows or glassine paper for windows um, just easy little easy little projects but they were always covered with glitter and that's what I'm excited about because my friends cinnamon my friend cinnamon has been doing glitter oh my gosh and her mom ginger 
has been doing have been doing glitter and just made me want to get my glitter out and I haven't done it yet and I'm so excited to try I have made these putts houses before so that's not going to be a new thing trying that but I've never recorded doing it so it's going to be exciting it's going to be different I picked up a little more yellow in that than I was thinking I was doing boy I'm spending a lot of time painting this edge but I won't have to do it again and if it's not covering all the way that's okay because I've already painted it once with the acrylic paint so it's already sealed and it's already there's already paint there so I think I've got that pretty well done all right so now while that's drying I want to go ahead and we'll zoom in just a little bit and I'll shift around just a little bit maybe we'll zoom one more time there we are so the, the snowman is going to be sitting on snow so my first little line so I'm just going to draw a little line going across here and a little line going across the front and that's just giving me now a little area for the snowman and a tree to hang out so my little snowman is basically one ball circle another circle a third circle and I'm sort of a traditionalist my snowman has a large ball on the bottom a medium ball in the middle and a smaller ball on the top he's going to get the hat and I'm giving him the traditional top hat not that anybody has a top hat anymore and not that anybody can really fit a hat on their snowmen's heads because well snowmen's heads are humongous and I don't think anybody has a hat that big in their closet but now my snowman is also going to have twiggly arms and I love that twiggly word cinnamon uses that and it just fits those snowman arms and the other arm with the little hands and I'm not going to worry about drawing his face right now because his face is going to get painted over as soon as I paint this white so now the tree the tree I'm just making it up as I go and I think it's going to change a little bit from what I had drawn in white but that's okay because this is all watercolor pencil and a white watercolor pencil is going to just disappear with all of the other water and paint that gets put on and now I have to remember this tree I'm not going to lose the top of it because it's all inside of the globe and if you if you don't remember that you can't draw this draw the tree outside of the globe it has to stay inside here so I'm working at remembering that which is kind of hard because I like to draw really big branchy branch trees and uh, this one is going to be a little different <laughs> And after I have painted the snowman or the snowman and the tree in I'm going to be doing a little bit of spattering and I should really stop drawing twigglies because those can be put in afterwards with just the, the paints that I'm going to be using so there it is that's it that's the whole 
drawing done. Put away the watercolor pencil now. And I'm going to be getting ready to start painting. Now, I think that because this background up here is still a little bit wet, I'm going to go ahead and work on the base. And the base is going to go in with a little bit, I'm actually going to paint with the cad red and some of the burnt sienna first. because I like to have that kind of glowiness underneath. And I don't know what kind of wood, wood this is or what kind of stain this is. It's just the underpainting, so it really doesn't matter. Grab a little bit more of that red. Just paint this in. Okay, and I don't know if you can see the the blue is actually sort of bleeding into my the blue watercolor pencil. It's sort of bleeding into my paint, and that's okay because it's just going to add a little shading to it. And Remember, this is just the first layer. So it doesn't have to be perfect color. Actually, you don't want it to be a perfect color. You want it to be the color that you want as an undertone to your actual painting. You don't need that final brown you want it to be kind of glowy brown. And if you want it to do that, you've got to put more than just that one color on. My colors are getting a little bit thick. It's kind of cold in the room that I'm working in. Um, I do have lots of lights, or lots of lights as far as I'm concerned, but the lights I'm using are all LED, so they're not putting off much heat. And the room I'm in doesn't actually have a heater. I do have the door open to the rest of the house where the heat is. Now, I don't know how interesting you think think I am and if you don't think I'm very interesting you can always hit the fast forward button I need to not go up into my globe though into my glass ball all right so I've got my undercoat on here looks pretty good there Looks awfully dark. I don't know if you can. Yes, you can see that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out and pull this back forward. There we go. All right. So that's the base coat of the base. That's pretty cool. So now what I'm going to do, and I find that I say that a lot, now what I'm going to do, I want to explain everything, and I don't know if I'm explaining it for you or if I'm explaining it to myself. I sometimes have this interesting dialogue going on inside my head that I'm telling myself, now the next thing I'm going to do, the next thing I'm going to do, and uh, 
I don't know if anybody else finds the inside of my head very interesting. I do sometimes find it interesting. I am now going <laughs> to take a little bit of the burnt, sien burnt sienna and a little bit of the burnt umber and see what that looks like together. Ooh, that's nice. Just a nice dark chocolate brown. Take a little bit more of that burnt sienna into that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get the tree blocked in. And I am using, uh, this is a 3 8 inch bright, uh, ex excuse me, a 3 8 inch angle brush. So that I can get it in here and lay it along the edge. I'm trying to get that paint pushed down out of the back. <laughs> there we go. So I can get the main trunk in. Looks like I need a little bit of water because my paint's drying up a little bit. I sort of had it out for a while. There we go. That's better. So, getting that tree in there. I do want to give credit to uh, Cinnamon Cooney as one of my main instigators, <laughs> one of the main people who has given me the courage, actually, to try doing this. Um, the whole YouTube thing. I have not, I hadn't ever thought about doing it. And I was talking with, with Cinnamon and I've been talking with Maricha, the Junkin Data Girl and Secret Soto. And they all have these awesome channels and they all have these great, this great community that crafts with them and paints with them and it's, it's just so exciting to see this all happening and I wanted to join in I wanted to play with them I I wanted to to have the same kind of fun with community with doing art I've been doing art all my life but doing art in a way that can touch more than just the the people that I run into at work or my family picking up a little bit of that mixture that I had made earlier with the cad red and the and the burnt sienna just because it was there and I don't like to have paint go to waste. I am going to switch to a smaller brush because this one is starting to get a little bit too big for what I'm doing. And I don't want to end up with a Halloween tree. So I'm going to switch down. I've got a little, this is about a uh, eighth inch bright. So I'm going to try that for a minute. I may switch off of that and go to the liner brush also. But I've also been being influenced by uh, Angela Anderson and her channel and the community that's developed around her and her painting. And now painting is something I love to paint. I love it. I am not uh, college trained in painting. I actually only ever took one art class in college. I went to college to be a data processor computer programmer and uh, took one art class in college 
and the art teacher kept asking me, why are you doing computer programming? You should be doing art. And my answer to him was, I want to eat. Um, and my parents were very, uh, very supportive of whatever I wanted to do. And I think that they were a little surprised that I went with the computer stuff also. My dad's an artist of many, many different types of art. And that's why you're going to see many, many different types of art on this channel. Because I can't stick with just one thing. It just doesn't happen. Um, I've already done my, my little owl. I've done a folded book. I'm going to do the little folded putts houses. Sometimes you may see, you might see me even doing some embroidery, um, a little bit of crochet. I'm pretty sure there's going to be some felt crafting going on because Yep, I like to do felt crafting too. I love to make ornaments. I was talking with a lady at work today and she was so excited that the holiday season was coming up and that I would be help, I would be helping to trim her tree with more ornaments again. She goes, she can she can count the years that she has been working at the building the school that I work at by the number of my ornaments that are on her tree because she's gotten an ornament from me every year. So I have been, basically the, the challenge has been set up for me now. I, I need to make sure that I get my ornaments done. And if I'm going to do ornaments for myself, I might as well record them and make it available to you guys also. So I went ahead and picked up a little liner brush to sort of start filling in some of the twigglier branches and things. There's going to be some snow painted onto these branches. There's going to be a little spattering going on. I might end up painting a little bird on one of these branches. And don't be afraid of that because the little bird that I'm going to do are basically what I call dippy dot birds. It's, it's really going to be just a little dot of paint with maybe a little triangle of a different color on the top of the dot and then a beak and a little tail pulled down off of it. Um, so that's, that'll be easy. That will be so, so easy. I'm almost done just, I'm just sort of playing here with this tree. This is the first time that I've actually set it up this way to paint on it. I usually sit in my living room with my easel. I've got a little tabletop easel that's a little bit bigger than this one that I'm using here. And with that tabletop easel, I can have it set for larger canvases. And I'll sit in the living room and I'll watch a video on how to paint something. And it may not even be what I'm painting, but I like to have the videos on and I like to listen because sometimes the artist who is painting will say something that will be perfect for what I'm painting right then, even though I'm not painting the same picture they're painting. Kind of interesting how that happens. Sort of like listening to, listening to the radio. 
and you're talking to someone and you say a line, you say a word or a phrase, and then you hear that same phrase being spoken by the announcer on the radio. It's kind of creepy, <laughs> kind of freaky, not creepy, but freaky, kind of freaky. All righty. Well, I think I have just a couple more that I want to darken up here just a little bit. I'm just using the liner brush and I'm just laying it on and just pulling. And I'm still just use mostly I'm just using that leftover paint from the base, which was the red and the burnt sienna, and I'm mixing it with a little bit of the raw um, uh, burnt umber. And I've been just building up layers, just building up layers, giving it texture, building bark, trying to remember how a tree grows, making sure that I make it, make the branches that are coming off of each branch smaller as it goes away from the trunk of the tree or away from the big branch. And I may not be quite as successful with that. Sometimes my branches get a little bit thick. This one right here is a bit thicker up, up in this area. So what I'll do is I'll come back down here and I will thicken up the tree. And yes, I know this isn't a real tree. It's inside of a snow globe and snow globes can have a different kind of reality than real life, real, more reality or different reality than real life. Okay. That, that, that's interesting concept, isn't it? Um, so anyway, this branch right here needs to be thickened up at, at the base of that branch where it's coming off of the main trunk. There we go. This is a this is a hefty little tree for being inside here in this little snow globe. I think that's probably what we're going to end up with here. Doesn't have to be. Absolutely perfect. This is behind glass, inside of water. It's a snow globe. It's a snow globe. I need to not be quite so worried about it. It's a snow globe. But I do want to thicken up that base just a smidge more. And I'm just dipping into the water to thin down this paint just a little bit because with the liner brush, you really can't, it's not heavy enough to pick up a lot of heavy paint. I mean, these bristles are, these bristles are long and skinny. These bristles start right there. So that's the bristles. There's probably about 50 bristles right there. That's it. <laughs> Maybe only 25. I'm not sure. Okay. I can always go back in and thin down some of these spaces with a little bit of the blue and white. Maybe I'll do that. Instead of continuing to make it get thicker, why don't I go in and get it thinner? So there we go. You might hear my dog walking around. He's got clicky nails and he's, he's 15 years old and he doesn't hear anymore. And he really is having a hard time seeing. So he'll knock into things sometimes. 
So we'll we'll see. I may end up having to pause for a minute to go take care of him. It's almost like having a kid again. Almost like having a child. So let's see here. Well, that thinned that down. Let's let's give a little more separation in that branch. There we go. Woo, that's that's a little more separation than I wanted, I think. And I want a little more separation there. Nice thing about it. This color is the same color that I used in the background. So. And yes, you'll, you'll see that I do stop talking. I am a bit of a chatty Kathy, and I usually have this dialogue going on inside my own little head, and I don't, but I don't, <laughs> I don't tend to share it out loud, and so this is rather interesting to me. to be doing this. So let's see. I think I want to thin that down. Get that going into more of a second branch going off to one side. That's kind of interesting. I need to thin that. I need to thin the left side of that branch down. Um, let's thin that down that way. There we go. And we'll thin this down because by thinning those down, I will be able to come back in and add some more little twiggly bits. I love that word, twiggly bits. I got that from Cinnamon. I started watching her, and I have learned so much from her painting and from Cinnamon's, um, oh, just, just the love that she shows, the care that she gives to those that are just learning. And I was totally shocked and amazed that somebody as accomplished as she is, I mean, she has things in galleries. She has people all around the world that have collected her artwork. How accessible she is. You know, for people, you know, just starting out, just just wanting to learn how to paint. She, Cinnamon Cooney, the heart, the art Sherpa, she is awesome. She is awesome. And I may not show it to them, but certain artists, certain uh, performers, people that, that I become friends with them, um, they don't really realize I'm actually kind of awestruck and sort of, I don't know, I don't get tongue-tied and I treat them just like regular old people, but I am kind of in awe of them and I'm I'm more in awe of the heart and the care that is shown and it's exciting it's exciting when you're watching a video live 
and you ask a question and they'll say your name and they'll they'll comment and they'll make you know give you an answer that helps you out and it's just so cool I just I don't know I'm I am a fan of Cinnamon Cooney. I'll just write out there. I am a fan of Cinnamon Cooney. But I'm a fan of Maricha, the drunken data girl, too. And of Secret Soto. I am a fan of both of those two ladies. They are amazing artists crafters. They are both such caring individuals also. And really, those two were the ones that, that I, I won't say they pushed me into it because no one can actually push you into doing something like recording videos. They're not sitting here. They're not even in the same state that I am. They, they can't tell me what to do. But seeing the fun that they were having. Yeah. I decided that that would be something that would be fun. I wanted to do it too. I wanted to play. I wanted to play. I wanted to be at their table at lunch. How about that? Let's put it in middle school pers perspective. I wanted to be at Cinnamon and Maricha the Junkin' Data Girl, and Secret Soto's table at lunchtime because they're the cool kids, and I want to get to be one of the cool kids. And right now, even though I'm kind of a hanger-on and just sort of getting into this, I'm just taking titanium white with a little bit of the blue added to it just a little bit, just to, to tone it down just a smidge, and just putting it on as snow on the branches. So there it is. I've got it out in public. I want to be at the cool kids table. So, I'm excited to get to play. I'm excited. I'm hoping that everybody, I hope, I'm hoping that other people that see my painting are actually excited about what I'm doing. Um, I don't know. I'm already hitting it. It's already been 43 minutes. Wow, I need to step this up just a little bit. Remember, you can fast forward. You don't have to go through and listen to me jabber on. I do, I do like to talk. But you don't have to listen. You were getting kind of the uh, stream of consciousness version of the inside of my head. All right, so now I'm going to just drag this brush that doesn't have hardly any paint on it. Well, actually, it has a lot of paint on it, but it's not very moist. I'm just dragging the brush down to kind of give a bit of texture. Give it sort of a bark look. I'm using the texture of this canvas underneath to my advantage since it is, you know, it was a cheap canvas. These six inch squares at Michael's after a certain time at night, it was like after seven o'clock or something in the evening, they had these 
four packs of six inch canvases on sale for 70% off. It came to $4 for a four pack of six inch gallery wrapped. And these are actually even good gallery wrapped. It's not cut here. It's actually folded and folded in and then brought all the way around and stapled. I mean, this is fin this would be finished enough to be able to hang it on the wall and not have to worry about it. You don't have to frame it or anything. All right, so that's that's done. As much as I'm going to do on that for now. I might go back in with a little bit of just the burnt sienna and a little bit of white at at a later time, but right now, no, I'm good. So now I am going to go ahead and get the snow on the ground. And that is the white is mixed with a little bit of blue, a little bit of that phthalo blue is mixed in. So it kind of grayed it down just a little bit because I don't want pure white yet. I want to be able to save my pure white for when I'm doing my highlights around the outside of the glass and the highlights on the snowman. So I remember this is a snow globe. It's not it's not real snow. It's, it can look kind of cold. It can even look kind of real, but it's not a real snow globe. And I'm hoping that this video turns out and that I'll be able to use it for my Hashtag love winter art. Because that would be really cool since this is winter art. I'm going to get a little bit more of that blue. Because I want to work some shadowy bits into this. But I don't need, <laughs> whoa, I don't need quite that blue. Okay, I have to wipe my brush off because, boy, I'm getting messy. And I just pulled the bristles off my brush. Ugh, there. Shove it back on. Come on. I want you to work. Ah, there you go. All right, got that. Got that back on. We'll get this. We'll get this. There we go. So now I'm just taking this right along that edge of the inside of the glass. Okay, you can't see that. Let me go this way. Just taking that straight edge down, and I'm flattening it out and squishing the paint out. Ooh, that was close. Almost started wearing paint. Now I know why Cinnamon wears aprons. She is the lady of the aprons. I have one apron, but I'm cold 
and so I have a a little shawl sweater thing that pops on over my head. It's kind of like a little cape or a little poncho, more like a little poncho, a ponchette, tiny poncho. It just comes past the, just to the middle of my back and to the middle of my front. All right, so we've got that. I'm going to take a little bit more blue and I'm just going to go and lay in some shadows. Lay in a shadow right along by where the snowman is. And then up here in the tree to the one side, the side going towards the snowman, just laying in some shadowy bits, and kind of along this edge. All right. So we'll see how that, we'll see how that plays, huh? That, that's looking pretty good. Maybe a little bit darker blue right up along by the snowman because I want him to show up as really w much more white, even though he's not going to be pure white. Let's see, well maybe I'll go ahead and put some white around that outside edge. I think I'll do that. Grab my, let's see, do I want to do it with my angle? Let's see, don't have any paint on it right now, I just want to test. Yeah, I think I'm going to try. I'm going to try with my with my angle brush. I want to make it a little more fluid. -y. Whoa, this brush was dirty. Let's beat that brush up a little bit. Get that get that paint out of there. Okay, so I'm just going to use my brush and I'm going to scoop away that more brownie paint that got in there. There we go. That's better. Whew. Take a little bit of that blue. I don't want pure white yet, but I want it almost pure white. But by picking up the blue and having the blue be that color, the pure white is going to look a lot more white. Another trick that I learned from Cinnamon Kumi. Yes, this sounds like a Cinnamon Cooney Art Fest, a uh, heart party um, appreciation show. <laughs> and, well, it is. It is. Cinnamon has definitely made an impression on my life. She's made an impression on my husband, too. And this is a good thing. He's, he's actually doing so much more artwork. We both started out painting with cinnamon, and now my husband has started uh, watercoloring and journaling. Oh, 
made it all the way around. All right. So, yeah, he's he has been watercoloring. He's been sketching. He's been developing his eye. Now, my husband's been a been a photographer for many years. And he's done projects where he would do a 365 project where he would take a picture. Okay, I'm going to be quiet again for a second. He would take a picture every day for a year. Which was so cool. Which was so cool. And then he'd do it, he did it like three years in a row, he did a 365 project. And then he did a uh, 52 project where he did a whole day of pictures once a week. He was still taking pictures most days, but he would go and do for sure a full day of pictures once a week. keep trying to clean up that one little edge. All right. So now there, after the snowman is in, there's going to be some, some more highlights going over the top of this to give it more of that roundness going this way. But before I do those highlights, I will spatter some paint on for the snow that would be falling on the inside. Um, but for right now, we're going to get this, we're going to get this snowman in. I'm going to use a little bit smaller brush. We're going to use the gray color from the outside. Ooh, that's. Uh, with a little bit of a dirty brush that has a little bit of brown in it, apparently. That's okay. I'll make that work. has a little bit of the burnt sienna in it, and a little bit of the raw umber in it, and it's just making a gray. I'm just, just mixing it with that blue and the white and the, the dirty brush. That gives me that color that came out of the trees mixed into the snow. A little bit of that color that was in the base is mixed into that snow. All right, so now, boom, get the snowman on here. And actually, that having that blue pencil on there is creating a color in the snow also. And I'm using quite a bit of paint because that's giving me a little texture and a little definition between the snowballs. It may take a little bit longer for it to dry, but once I get the snowman on, I'm almost done with the inside of the uh, snow globe. are. Okay, so I will get his twiggly bits, his arms, and his hat, and then go back and get the rest of the base. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm going to leave the ground 
Should I paint the ground an another color? Maybe, um, maybe I'll make it kind of a bricky, a bricky color. So I'll take some of the red and a little touch of the blue. And then mix a little white into it. That works. That'll just give us a little bit of a different color for the for the base. Well, actually I'm going to be adding some other color on here. But we're going to make it kind of the kind of a, a winter gray, winter gray sky for the floor. Winter gray sky for the floor. for the tablecloth, for the, for the surface that this is hanging out on. Oh, and that means I need to paint that. Sorry about lifting that away from you. Alrighty, so. Let's just grab a plunk of more white, plunk of more red, another plunk of blue. Getting kind of a randomy, not mixed up really well color. Just get that on there. And yes, you are going to see me just do it because when I'm done with the project, I want to be done with the project. That's one of the things that really, really stands out with me. I am somebody that I have to get the whole project done. And I really like to be able to have a whole project done in one sitting. I'm not somebody that likes a multiple day you know, do this part, do that part, let it dry for, you know, for days. Um, one of the reasons why I am not someone who likes oils. I, I don't particularly like oil painting. Um, I love the look of oil painting. I think oil paintings are amazing and that the people who can do it are very gifted they have a special kind of patience that I don't have. I don't have that special patience. And I will pick up my canvas and I will spin it around and just as I did here. And again, I go a little bit quiet when I'm concentrating. I think most people do. I really think most people do go quiet when they concentrate, when they let their brain figure out what they're doing artistically. I like to I actually like to go into that place where words don't work. But I think watching me paint without any sound, because at this point right now, um, this is, now this may not be the third video that I place up, but this is my third video that I'm, I'm actually recording. And I haven't quite, um, figured out if I wanted to use music in the background when I'm not talking. I haven't quite figured out if I'm really, you know, interesting enough, I guess, for people to want to listen to me jabber on. 
while I'm painting. But I want to show that a beginner, or, well, I might be a little bit more than just a basic beginner, but I am definitely not an advanced painter yet. I've done one painting that I would consider probably pretty, well, advanced for, for me, for the time frame that I jumped in and did it. I have a painting on my blog that is of a pocket squirrel. It's a squirrel in a pocket. <laughs> it's a squirrel in a, in a pair of blue jeans. And I'll put a link of it, a link directly to that page on my, on my blog. Um, my blog is deliberatelycreative.blogspot.com. Whoops, sorry about coming off the screen. Um, and uh, I think... This is going to go, sort of this color is going to end up being the shadow. On this side. Um, yeah, deliberatelycreative.blogspot.com is my, is my blog. And I've had the blog for a long time. I've but I've only been actively putting things on it again for the last couple months. And as, as time goes on, I think I'm, I'm actually starting to enjoy putting things on again. I got to a point where, eh, why? Why was I doing it? I wasn't having fun when I was doing it. And you know, you do it and you're going, hmm, anybody even looking at it? And I had a few followers on it um, and a few comments here and there. And truthfully, right now, I'm still, I only have a few followers on it and very few comments because I hadn't had it out there where people, I hadn't advertised it really. I hadn't made it known to people. So let's see. Yeah, that's dry. I can go ahead and do, put his hat in real quick. And I just picked up my, what was that one? That was the uh, quarter inch, right? And I'm going to take the raw, uh, the burnt umber and a little touch of the blue and mix those together to get kind of a blacky color and maybe just a smidge of the red, which gives me a nice rich black, blackish color, like deepy blue, greeny black. Yeah, let's do a little bit more. So I just accidentally bumped it into a little bit of white and that's why it started lightening up on me. And a little smidge of the red again. There we go. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and go right up on the edge and make his little hat brim. Then I'm going to set the bristles down and just drag across and drag across. And that makes his little stove, stove top, stove pipe hat. And I don't know if anybody even knows why they're called stove pipe hats, but I'll tell you, it's because the hat, the barrel of the hat or the crown of the hat resembled a stove pipe, which was the um, the pipe that would go up 
can put a little bit of white up on that and on the edge there and on this brim right here because that turned it to a gray color there we go um, so when houses were heated by wood fires you would have a stove in the house that was heated that was uh, heated up with wood and you had a big black pipe that ran up along the wall and then went out through a hole in the side of the house and that stove pipe was a big round black pipe and that's what they so that's why they called those those hats stovepipe hats because they look like a stovepipe okay now I'm going to put his little arms in I'm going to make a wider bit right here come out to sort of a point and I'm going to do the same thing I'm just I'm just picking up whatever paint I dark paint on here my mixed my mixed paints and I'm going to do the same thing here make kind of a wide part and this time I'm just going to drag it straight out to his finger or branchy bit and then we're going to drag and over branchy bits branchy bits there we go okay all right I'm gonna make sure that all of that brown is out of that brush and it is this is the brush that I need to, to glue back together again because the ferrule keeps coming off. All right, so now I'm going to grab a little bit of that gray blue on the same brush. I'm just going to touch in a couple spots. Places where I think that the snow would have settled a little bit more. There we go. All right. Okay, I am going to grab a little brush, a little detail. I just need to find it. There it is. Actually, this isn't even just a little detail. This is a little tiny filbert. It's so cute. Little teeny tiny one. It's a decorative painting brush. Um, this is a Royal number two with a plastic candle. I don't know. BK 66, but it's a number two Royal brush and I've had it for years and years and years. I don't even know if it's one that's made anymore. Um, <laughs> I just found it in the cupboard. Alrighty. So I am going to get my that darky dark dark color that I had made for the for the hat just load up that brush I'm going to go in and I'm going to make one dot for the eye and like a little lump of coal and then I'm going to make a bigger dot because this eye is closer to you. Yes, another thing I learned from cinnamon. And I am going to give him buttons down his or lumps of coal down his tummy. So he's getting a chunk there and a chunk there like buttons and one more down below all right and I am gonna have to get a detail a little bit more detail -y. I am going to 
grab that red, the cad red. This is cad red medium. This is the actual real cad red uh, with the cadmium. Um, if you don't want to use the real cad red or you've got little kids that might be might be uh, painting with you, go ahead and use the cad red medium hue. The same as with the yellow, I'm using cad yellow medium. And uh, use the cad medium hue. It's n it's not as toxic. It doesn't have the nickel cadmium in it, or whatever the cadmium is that is in these uh, those paints. Okay, I'm going to make his little his little carroty nose. I'm going to grab a little more red. I'm going to run it kind of underneath the edge of his nose, sort of mixing together. And then I'm going to mix or rinse the brush out just a little bit, not, not making it perfectly clean, but mixing it up or running it out just a little bit. And I'm picking up some of my yellow that looks like it's got a little phthalo blue in it because but I'm going to go ahead and just even though everything is sort of wet-ish I'm just going to tap this paint on and it's going to mix with mixes with the red underneath so there's there's a little bit closer up view. That's what the snow looks like. Here's the snowman. So you can see how using the a little bit heavier paint in the brush is getting, got me the, I've got shadowing because it's on top of the blue. I've got some depth here because of the little bit thicker paint. It's giving him kind of a cute look. All right. Getting close, getting close, getting close. I need to spatter this on the inside only, and then I'm going to finish the base, put the highlights on, and we'll be done. So I need to figure out how I am going to spatter. So I need a, I need a looser brush. Ooh, that's a looser brush. This is just a fluffy brush that I think I'll be able to flick paint down with. We'll see. We will see what we get. I'm just sort of, this is a nice moppy brush. Just want to get that paint wet. I need to hmm I don't think that's wet enough tap tap tapping it and it's not nothing is coming off nothing is coming off not good not good oh, my cup of tea has gone cold because I've been talking and painting and Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'm getting a lot of it down below, so let's move up higher, maybe. This is definitely a skill that I have not had much experience with yet. I'm probably going to wear more of the paint than I am getting on, but that's the reason why I did not finish the base.
see because I don't think that this oh that's actually weird but it's kind of working okay white finger the white finger of paint the white finger of flicking all right so use a little bit of the water and just I'm just gonna wipe off some of that snow or actually no I can take a brush and I can kind of scrub that just a little bit See what we get here and yes my dog was barking um, because he is as old as he is he doesn't hear his bark he knows he's barking but he doesn't hear it so then he'll bark and he'll bark and we think that he might be hearing something outside but we're not sure what it is so And I'm going to get just a little bit more of that, that lovely bluey color. With the white. Because I'm actually bringing it sort of up near but not right on to the glass to start working some of that idea of the see-throughness where you would have a bit of a, that little bit of the edge of the glass that it's just totally reflecting the background. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to snow. But I'm going to see if it does. Actually, it is snowing right there on this picture. Living in the Pacific Northwest, we don't get as much snow as some places in the United States. And so snow out here is kind of exciting. And it doesn't happen every year. I mean, we do get snow and we, we have had we have had a white Christmas within the memory of those of us living right now. Um, that are old enough to remember just about seven years ago we had a white Christmas with about 14 inches of snow and that was totally amazing and the last time it had done that was like 1978 so or 76 so um, you know, it doesn't happen very often but it does happen from time to time all right actually that's starting to look kind of good um i think i'm going to go ahead and get that base get that base in throw a little bit more of a real shadow around the bottom and pretty much be done 
because this is getting awfully long. This is an hour and 25 minutes, so I don't know. I might end up doing this as a speed paint, and people are not going to be hearing me chat and talk all of this time anyway, um, because I'm not Cinnamon Cooney, and I don't know that I'm really that interesting to watch that long, paint that, you know, do a whole process paint. I don't know if anybody really would want to have an hour and a half of me talking. Um, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe somebody would like that and maybe I'll go ahead and do it that way and and do it as a speed paint give people choices maybe that's what I'll do I'll just give people choices so just picking up some burnt sienna and some Burnt Umber. Trying to figure out how to not get my hand in the way. I haven't been paying as really close of attention. I'm, I'm trying to, but sometimes I get painting. And I just don't pay as close of attention as I should. Just get a Put a bit of the darker color in there so it sort of swings around, gives us a little shadow and a little depth. Maybe a little bit more of the sand on this part, so it'd be a little bit lighter. Actually, I'm going to add a little bit of cad yellow to it to lighten it up because that's a way to lighten a color without making it a pastel. Add a little bit of yellow to it or add a little bit of another color that doesn't change it too much because really this changed it a little bit, but it didn't change it too much gave me a a warm shade of the brown. I think I'll take some of that down here too. And kind of taking it off the edge there. And this just is getting painted. This will get painted just barely around the edge there. I'll do it. I'll take that. I'll take that challenge. Just, just barely over the edge. Barely over the edge. And just sort of round it off. Since that's really just the edge of the, the edge of the snow globe base. So now I'm I'm sort of swiping and sort of in a rounded motion like a like a letter C just sort of swiping up and then around up and around. I don't know if it's making much of a difference there. Whoopsies. Grab my wet brush. Because the paint underneath is dry, I can take a wet brush and just sort of maneuver that paint back and wipe it off, wiping my brush off on my, my little towel here. All right. Now we're getting some nice definition, some nice, whoops. Well, I think I'm just going to work with that one. 
I'll just go a little bit more rounded here. There we go. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of that yellow into my color over here again with that burnt umber this time and the raw sienna burnt sienna excuse me i keep saying raw sienna but it's burnt sienna and i'm just sort of flicking pulling it back just a little bit and i'm using the the edge of the brush see how's that looking how is that looking that's actually yeah it's not looking too bad it's not looking too bad although I am going to grab a different brush drop that into the water grab a different brush just a little brush just so I have a little bit more control over it right here on this edge and I'm going to do the same thing on this one, but I need to even that edge up just a little bit. And then I'm going to swoop around. See this, this edge here has flattened out and this edge here is nice and round. So I need to get this one swooped up and out a little bit more. There we go. There we go. And then the same thing up here, I need to kind of swoop out and around a little bit. because this edge over here was swoopy. To a certain extent, I need to actually bring it up a little bit higher and swoop. There we go. And then we're going to take a little bit of this burnt umber and I'm just going to use it barely on the edge and we're going to take it around the bottom of the globe. I am resting my hand on the canvas because it's dry up here and I'm sorry that my hand is getting in your way and I need to get that burnt umber That'll be better. Just get that shadow in there. Because it's a little bit, it's actually a little bit of a reflected shadow of the, of the base up onto the glass of the snow globe. Moving out that line just a little bit. Okay, there we go. All right, so now we're going to go with more of just the yellow with a tiny bit of the sienna, uh, the umber. We need to get a little bit more of that definition on the highlight. And I think that will make a nice highlight. Just 
a little bit on the inside there. You don't want too much because you don't want it to come forward too much, too far. But there we go. Up here on this top edge we do. I may just want to take a little bit more. I'm not even cleaning my brush. I'm just going to go down and take a little bit more of this uh, burnt umber. Let's rotate that so you can see. And where that rolled edge of that wood is, I just want a little bit more definition of dark underneath. We'll need a little bit of yellow coming in, and that's okay. That's okay. We're just working this in. I can sit there and putz and futz with it for a long time. All right, now I'm going to figure out how to do the lovely little highlights and I think I think what I'm going to be doing first is taking some of that white with just a, the tiniest little touch of blue so I need more white tiny touch of blue that's still too much blue I just want to keep working keep working That's good. Rinse that out. Keep pulling my brush apart. All right, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Move, move, move. Zoom, zoom. Okay, I think that'll be good. First off, I'm going to take a little bit of water and I am going to soften up that brown down here. And bring it up the side just a little bit. And up this side just a little bit. And not so much. I'm going to, I'm sorry, I have to flip this over. I'm going to push this back. Because what it's doing now is it's just stained that bottom edge a little bit. There we go. That's feeling better. There, we've just stained that bottom edge. We've taken care of that, that kind of canvas feel that was coming through. We've smoothed this out. There we are. Now we've got that little reflection of the that wood base. got a little bit of that reflection of the wood base here on the bottom. And remember, everything has an ugly stage. That little edge is kind of an ugly thing right now. All right, so now I'm going to dry brush. Dry, dry brush. Dry, dry brush. And this is still a bluey white. Let's see here. You can't... Uh, let's see if I move over here. I guess I could do it. Yeah, I could do it right 
in that area. See, this is still, this is just a very bluey, just a bluey white. Now I'm going to take some of this white over that grayed out brownie bit. Give it a little bit of a harder edge. Kind of push in just a little bit with the edge of the, the, the corner of the brush. Start giving it a little more definition, a little more hardness around this outside edge. Not so much of a dry brush pressure, not that real light pressure, but now I'm giving it a little bit harder and then sort of going off to a softer pressure. It's harder around the outside edges and then I'm going softer as I come in so that it's not Oh, there we go. It's okay. We needed a harder, um, a, a couple harder actual reflections or else it wasn't going to look round. We need to get it nice and round. There we go. There we are, I think. Oh, a little bit of a shadow on the table. A little bit more shadow on the table. Going around both at both sides. But I think, except for going and cleaning off some of the, uh, after it's all dry, there's a few spots where the paint uh, pencil is, the watercolor pencil. There's a few spots. But I can deal with that after it's dry. And the red. Ooh, maybe not that much red. And the blue. what I'm doing is making a dark that's a dark brownie color that will work as a right under this edge and then drag it out as a shadow I don't want to make a dark hard shadow I'm kind of doing a dry brush shadow but I do want a dark line right under the edge and then that shadow going away falling off I don't know let's see how does oh and it would be good if I would remember at least I haven't gotten too far here to, to let you guys see what I'm doing and now this edge here is just going to be just that under the under the edge. I'm not going to do a lot of shadow coming out. Maybe just a smidge. Maybe just a little bit more of a smidge. There we go. Sorry about the whispering. I'm not trying to whisper. Um, Maybe that color. Oh, that's kind of an interesting color for a shadow. It's not bad. Got a little bit of a little bit of a couple colors picking up in this. But I didn't want so much of the texture. 
I need to do something, but I didn't want it to to go completely gray. Actually, I think I'm going to get that wet. more of a stain so I want to I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'm going to take a big brush and wipe that off a bit so I think I want this to have more of a red color to the background to the table instead of a brown because the brown is blending too much with my base or maybe I'll just take it back to blue so Well, it's really wet. Let's see if I can do that. Let's see if I can just blot that. And just sort of blotting it off because I'm not really happy with that brownie color. That color is not making me happy. And I do have to go back because this part was not completely dry. Not completely dry. So there we go. We will go in. And give that bottom edge a little bit more dark again. was not completely dry. All right, and now, really quick, ugh, yucky. Oh, I know, I have clean water. Let's use clean water. And I am going to make that base much more blue. There we go, much more blue, blue and white. Blue and white, there we go. Much more blue. Much more blue and white. Because I want something that's going to stand out a little bit from the base. And because that base is more of an orange, if I go with more of a blue, and I might put some little streaks of red into it. I don't know. This is, it's winter. It's winter. Or I might go with more blue. More, more blue. Since I have the blue in my brush. Might as well use it. More, more, more. More, more, more. And yes, I do like it. How do you like this? Are you happy? Are you excited about this? Would you go and do one of your own? If you do, I'd love to see it. I've got a Facebook page that you could go and share it on. You just have to join. Whoops! As I pick up my, as I pick up paint from the palette. Just 
just a little bit. Yep, we'll just tap it with a little bit of a little bit of blue. I'll wipe it down in just a second. So, blue and white and over that dark gray. Cuz that dark gray wasn't really making me happy either. This is definitely feeling like it needs to be a speed paint. I don't think anybody is going to want to sit for an hour and a half. Oh, two hours watching me paint because I am not that exciting. I think I'm going to learn what it takes to do this. Maybe I'll speed through parts and I'll slow down through parts. And we'll see how that works. We'll see what what I can do to do voiceovers. I haven't played with the voiceovers yet. And I know that some people do those almost exclusively. So we'll see what I can do. We'll see what I can do. Dark line back there, drag down. Cross dark line right there. So I need a dark blue and drag across. Drag across. Dark blue. And we're going to get rid of most of that line of dark. All right, little sparks of white there and there, here and there, a little bit of white here and there. Because this is winter. Well, if you made it to the end of this, <laughs> thank you so much for sticking out with me. I really appreciate that. Um, if you didn't make it through the end, I hope you made it through enough of it to be able to see what the end looked like. If you fast forwarded to the end, hey, more power to you. I, I do not feel slighted in the least. I know that this probably took a lot longer than it had to because I am a lot, um, I am not a super experienced painter yet, but I had fun and I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Just laying some shadow in here underneath. Oh, and I'm so much happier about that too. This for shadow is way better than that gray was looking. That gray was looking pretty sad. And if I don't watch out, I am going to end up painting over my base more than I wanted to. So I am going to lay a little bit more, a little more shadow. There it is. There it is. I knew that there was some shadow in that brush. I knew there was some shadow there. There it is. All right. I can keep, I could keep on 
saying, oh, I'm done, and then keep doing a little more and a little more. Um, I need to stop, but I do want to clean up that little bit of the base where the blue went right over that edge. Of the brown and that's not making me happy so I'll take a little bit of my burnt sienna and a little bit of my burnt umber and I'm going to swoop around swoop around that and sort of draw along that edge. I just want it to I just want it to be done. I just really want it to be done. All right. That's that sh dark shadow under the glass. But then there should be little tiny 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 bit that's like lighter right here because the glass will also be along with there being a shadow in that space the glass is going to be reflecting some light also so we want to make sure that reflected light is honored. All right, I think this is done. I'm going to go ahead and lower the. Oops, get these paints out of my way. Lower that down flat and zoom in. Oops, and bring it this way so you can really see it. And we'll zoom in a little more. And now that snow globe, I think, looks pretty good. I'm pretty excited about that. I see a couple little things I might fix. I might go in right in this area here and clean this up and straighten it up just a little bit and get this so that the wood is bumped out a little bit more, um, separated from the base, uh, that swoopy bit in down here. But other than that, I'm really tickled with how the globe actually looks like glass. I think that's pretty spiffy. All right, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I can't believe that it took me two hours to do this painting, but it's done. And it was done in one evening. And, uh, Thank you so much for coming to my hashtag love winter art um, event project. And there may be another project. Who knows? Um, there's information on where to find me on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, um, on Pinterest. So come check me out and check out my projects. Please, if you do this one, and there will be, I will do up a little drawing on my Pinterest to, uh, to help you out with this if you want to do it. Thank you so much, and I would really appreciate it if you would click like and subscribe to my channel. Please leave me a comment. Tell me what I did right, and you know, if you saw something that really needed to be done differently, let me know that too. I want to get better for you. Don't forget, get out there and do something creative.